Hi, I'm Jody, And I'm Allison. And you're listening to The Bloom Saloon. It's a Judy Bloom book club. We finished Tiger Eyes, guys. We did. It's been, a, it's been intense. Yeah. How do you feel about uh, finishing Tiger Eyes? Bittersweet. Yeah. As usual. But I'm really excited because we still have to watch the movie. Mm-hmm. So we still have a little bit left. I hope it's not disappointing. Everything I've read about it and heard about it, indicates that it won't be disappointing oh, good. I think we're in for a pleasant surprise oh oh I'm so excited about that but I know that it does shake things up a little bit it's not a hundred percent true to the book you know as we finished it I figured it had to be yeah because there's not really this like epic ending like uh-huh. it ends beautifully yeah but there's not like a lot of suspense or anything yeah. like that and so I figured For a movie ending, there has to be, like, something a little more dramatic. Or they might twist something or emphasize something a little bit more to make it a little more oomph. Um, I did read that Wolf is of Native American descent in the movie. And in the book, he's Hispanic. Right. Yeah. So I wonder why they changed that. Maybe to make his name make more sense. Right. Well, I think you and I both thought he was Native American going into the book. Right. Right? And then when we met Mr. Ortiz and we learned that he's Hispanic or Spanish speakers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Wolf knew a lot about, you know, the Native Americans Mm -hmm. and the culture. So maybe he was like half or something Mm. and we just didn't know. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we never realized who Wolf's mom was. Who was Wolf's mom? (laughs) Let's stop and think about that for a second. No mention of her. No, and she was never at the hospital. Mm -mm. Hmm. Hmm. Mystery. Yeah. Forever. Wonder how they handled it in the movie. (laughs) Can't wait to find out. Can't wait to find out. So yeah, we read chapters 33 through 40. Yeah, we did. Wrap this baby up. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, before we launch into it, let's just go over some quick odds and ends. Yes, please. So I want to give a shout out to Rebecca of Retro Reads. Woo, Rebecca! She is a bloomhead. She's a bloomhead and she has a great Instagram and Facebook where she posts the coolest book covers and has been chronicling Judy for the last, I think, couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's been so cool to see all the different versions of all of the different books. Yeah, you guys should really check her out. Um, I think... Uh, She's definitely on Facebook and Instagram, but I Mm -hmm. think the Facebook group is kind of the main portal, and she's creating collections of different book covers of all these young adult books from, like, the 70s through the 80s through the 90s. Um, A lot of R.L. Stein as well. Yeah. A lot of, like, uh, Sweet Valley. Mm -hmm. and um, Yes, it's really awesome. And she's got a ton of vintage magazines, too. Oh, man. Very impressive. Yeah, we love what you do. And then we want to announce our next book. And then again, maybe I won't yeah. announce the next <laughs> book. No, that's, it's just, just kidding. Oh, was... It's then again, maybe I won't. And it's told from the perspective of a boy. Yeah. And neither of us have read this one. No, it's it's an exciting journey. And, and shout out to Sarah, a, a fellow Bloomhead, who was really insistent we read that one next. Oh, it was all Sarah's doing. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Sarah. We thought about it, but she really pushed us over the edge. Yeah. And then we also want to um, remind you guys about our pin giveaway. So all mm-hmm. you need to do is go on to Twitter Instagram or Facebook, tell all your friends and followers about the Bloom Saloon. Link hey. to our uh, iTunes thing. Yeah, you can talk about how much you love us personally. Yeah, that also works. Yes, yeah. but yeah, just hag- hashtag it, <laughs> the Bloom Saloon. Yeah, and we'll reach out. Thanks in advance. <laughs> Let's hear about those characters. Oh, yeah. Got some classics. We've got Davy Wexler. Some uh-huh. classics? Yeah. <laughs> Classic Timeless, characters. Timeless. Iconic. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Davy Wexler. You should know her by now. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Mom, Gwen, and Jason, uh, Davy's brother. We've got Witsy, Walter and Bitsy. 
Um, we've got Ned. The nerd. The nerd. Um, who is mom's boyfriend? Dare we say? Ooh. A lover? Ooh. I don't know. I don't know if they're ever physical. I think he just takes her to nice dinners and she half-heartedly laughs at his bad jokes. I, I, I agree. Um, we've got a wolf. Wolf. A.K.A. Martin Ortiz. We've got Jane, who is Davy's friend at school. A.K.A. the... The lo- drunk. The low down Lodi. The down, no, the down low Lodi. Down low Lodi. That's exactly right. She's a um, preppy party girl. We've got Ruben. He makes a brief appearance. He was with Jane and Davy the night that uh, we first saw Jane getting drunk. Mm-hmm. And we've got Miriam, the therapist. Still love her. Love her. Well, she's like actually made a difference on these people's lives. Yeah. She's very helpful. Yeah. Like you said, she seems to be the only one with a decent head on her shoulders in all of Los Alamos. Yeah, I'm glad, you know, as much as we've pushed therapy, it's really paid off for these mm-hmm. people. And Miriam is is the evidence of that. So, yeah, that's that's who we're talking about. All right. On the app. On the app? The app. This app. Oh, app. Mm-hmm. Short for episode. Yeah. The step of the pod. Well, I'm going to read you chap. 33 then (laughs) please don't read the whole thing (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) i forgot we're not doing it that way um so chapter 33 it's davy's sweet 16 sweet 16 what did you do for your sweet 16th birthday by the way i don't remember yeah (laughs) i had to think about mine for a little while it wasn't an epic experience no I, I actually have absolutely no, recollection. no no idea what I did on my 16th birthday. That's awesome. Ooh. Well, Davey had a very low-key one as well. The family celebrated by cooking her favorite foods for dinner, which I thought the Sound- menu was very interesting. Sounded great. Chicken marengo, spinach noodles, and watercress salad. It's like the most random combo of elements, but... And there there's no way Walter was happy with that kind of dinner. Oh, no. For that meat and potatoes, man. Like, What's this? Spinach noodles? No way. Watercress? <laughs> and then she got some gifts. And I just have to go through these I gifts. I love the gifts. So good. So her first piece of Indian jewelry from her mom, a silver and turquoise bracelet. Um, a digital watch from Witsy. Those Casio digital watches, and sometimes they had little buttons, like calculator buttons on them. It's oh, probably yeah. like a getting getting an Apple Watch now. Very kind of an extravagant gift. I made me want a digital watch. Mm-hmm. I got like excited, like man, digital watches are cool. I did have one for a while in like the mid two thousands as kind of like a throwback funny thing, and it broke after like two days. Mm. They don't make them like they used to. No. Oh, and last but not least, Davy gets. A t-shirt from Ned that says a woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle that he ordered from the pages of Ms. Magazine. What is Ms. Magazine? I meant to look this up, but then I forgot. Do you know? Yeah, it was like a uh, feminist magazine. So like, why was Ned reading Exactly. It? This was like a Gloria Steinem type of feminist magazine. I'd, but I have a theory. I think Ned can pick up on the fact that she's not his biggest fan. Oh, yeah. But he's like, oh, she must not like me because she hates men because she's a feminist, you know? (laughs) I'll get her a shirt and everything will be okay. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's great, though. Yeah, maybe because she's a sassy woman, he just assumes. Yeah, she's one of those women's libs. But I think she is a feminist, so it's okay. I I think she believes in equal rights for men and women. Mm -hmm. Judy definitely does. Yeah. So Davy's having a great birthday with a fam, but she can't help but remember that her dad had promised to take her to New York City on her 16th birthday to see a Broadway show. And they had been talking about that for years leading up to her birthday and it just makes her sad to think about it. It's really sad. Yeah. But I also don't want to um, glaze over what Jason got Davy from Oh, her. yeah. I think you should be the one to tell us about this. Jason got Davy a painting and he wrote her a new poem. Roses are red, violets are blue, you are my friend, and I am yours too. Very sweet. And she squeezes him, 
and he says you're squeezing my hemorrhoids <laughs> that was the most important part yeah that for me that was good and i like that he was able to resolve to his like faux pas poem earlier mm-hmm. from calling her his brother so yeah. way to go jason but back to davy being sad about her dad totally yeah. understandable they were supposed to go for her 16th birthday to see a show on broadway right i hope one day she gets to do that yeah. Because it sounds like she's not like Margaret and her family. They're not going to New York on weekends oh, to go no. shopping. Maybe they probably never go. Margaret's family is very cosmopolitan. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then Bitsy and Jason baked her an elaborate cake with 16 icing rosettes on it. Davy blows out the candles and she makes a wish. What do you think her wish was? Definitely something to do with Wolf. I think she said, I hope the lizards come soon. Oh, she was like, Cuando los lagartios corren. Yeah, she's just chanting her... Her mantra! The lizard mantra. Do you remember how a few weeks ago we said that we should have a, a Bloom Saloon mantra? Well, I think that's I think it just fell it in is. our lap, yeah! It's when the lizards run, but in Spanish. Yes, and we if it's going to be our mantra, we should probably really master how to pronounce it. Cuando los lagartitos corren. Ooh, I like that R trill you did. I like that. Nice job. I'm working on it. I can't roll. I've never been able to roll my R's. I just have to make like a D sound like Corin. Oh. Corin. See, I can't do that. Yeah. I think it's a... Uh... Have you practiced a lot? I have. I think it's a tongue defect, honestly. Oh, no. You know the piece of skin that attaches your tongue to the bottom of your mouth? Mm-hmm. It's like a little, it's like kind of like more attached than the average oh, tongue. Oh, you can't stick out your tongue very far? No. Oh, my cousin has that too. Yeah. There's yeah, a it's name like a for thing. it. I yeah. don't know what it is. A lot of babies get it snipped, but I think oh, that. Oh, I didn't realize. I think probably people, 80s people <laughs> didn't know. There were a lot of things that didn't happen back yeah, then. Yeah, I would, we would always make fun of my cousin Emily because oh, no! she, would, she would just, she would just like stick her tongue out I'm the tiniest I'm not that bad. Bit. I can stick it out like. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, you can stick yours out really far. It's really scary. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was fun. Yeah. So the next day, Davy rides to the canyon. Despite there being a horrendous uh, sandstorm or windstorm or something's going on. Dust storm. Dust storm. There you go. She braves the elements. She needed a gas mask, like Burning Man (laughs) style. Yes. Ride her bike with it. Or a... um, a, uh, yeah, gas mask with like a bandana like tied around her. Yeah, like definitely. This. And bracelets. Mm. And maybe um, some fuzzy booties. Uh-huh. Fuzzy neon booties. Then she would have been fine. Mm-hmm. So she's looking for lizards and she's looking for wolf. Neither are there. Nope. And then we're on to chapter 34. It's opening night of opening Oklahoma. Night. Oklahoma. 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 Yes. We're really good. Yeah. Um Davy's actually really good. Yeah. Davey, We're really good, but she's like really, really good. Really, really, really good. I mean, she does an encore. What did she even do an encore of? In the middle of the play. That blew my mind. I've never seen that happen before. No, but it sounded great. I think she just did her song again. <laughs> I'm just a girl who can't say no. <laughs> I love the idea of her, like, trotting back out like they want more. Right, right. Oh, and I wish Judy had described this performance in more detail i wanted to hear all the goss but it's like only a short paragraph felt way too quick it was just over before we knew it because if i had been davy this would have been the highlight of my life oh yeah but she did get a standing ovation yep and she uh was greeted backstage after the show by her friend zone boyfriend, poor Ruben. Yeah, Ruben kissing her on the cheek. Like next to her ear. And she's like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye, Mom. I know. Mom, over here. Mom, over here, help me. Mom. She, she really did do that. And I felt so bad for Ruben because he's been 
waiting in the wings, literally and figuratively, <laughs> since the beginning of the school year. I know, and I feel bad because I thought that he was going to be a bad dude and say that things had happened between him and Davey, and then he didn't. He was just a nice dude Yeah, the you whole should time. feel really bad about that. I feel that. really bad for this fictional character, Ruben. <laughs> but Sorry, I feel Rubes. bad also because he's been tutoring Davey. And she's just been using him for its smarts. Oh, I forgot about the tutoring. It reminds me so much of um, my so-called life with... See, there are a lot of parallels here. Um, What's his name? Um, The nerdy neighbor. Um, shit. You know who I'm talking about. He used to like sit in the tree and like take pictures. I know who you mean. Yeah. We need to ask Bloomhead Katie because she has all of the scripts. Oh, she has the transcripts of the show? Yeah, she typed them all. Oh, that's right! I don't want to rat her out, but she does. And so I feel like if we have any My So-Called Life questions, she can definitely help answer them. She typed them all out. I forgot about that fact. Yeah, she has them in a binder. That's amazing. God, what the fuck is his name, though? I'm trying to restrain myself from, from Googling I it. Know. Let's Google right now. Brian Krakow! Brian? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Brian's another nerd name. Sorry, Brian's out there. If there's ever a Brian in a book or a movie that's a nerd, they always call him Brain. Oh, I was like... <laughs> you know? It seems like it seems like common enough name. Like, I don't think it's all nerds, but think- Jody's got some real prejudice. <laughs> I do. Back to the backstage situation. Mom comes backstage holding a single yellow rose, and she's so proud of Davy. And I'm proud of mom because she's acting like a mom again. Mom's acting like a mom again. She's, yeah, becoming herself again, taking some of her agency back. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. I like it all. So fast forward a little bit to late April. Everyone at school has spring fever. And this was so cool, I thought. All the kids cut class to go for a hike. I realize now that when I first read that, I was reading it as like hay fever and thinking like, why are they going outside and taking hikes if they have hay fever? That's because I get hay fever in the spring, but spring fever, I get it now. Yeah. There's so many types of fevers. Hay fever, spring fever, cabin fever. I'm glad you took this chapter because I would have just been like, they had they bad terrible. allergies. Everyone had terrible allergies. <laughs> And they went, but they went hiking anyways. <laughs> Hope they brought their inhalers. Right. And their gas masks, just like Burning Man. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was really cool that, like, all the kids in school seemed to cut class all at once to go hiking. It's the only way to do it. Whenever we cut school, we would just, like, go around the corner and smoke cigarettes. We didn't go out to the mountains. Mm, right. I, I cut school a lot my senior year. I, w- I had an um, independent study photography class. Mm. And it was mostly darkroom time, which now I'm like, I wish I would have used that darkroom time, but I went to Waffle House a lot instead. Yes. And I remember there were other kids that had a photography class, like regular photography class during that time that I would skip with, and they got cut slips and I got nothing. And my teacher even like looked at me one day and was like, Allison was in the darkroom. I don't know what you're talking about. And like winked at me. Wow. Yeah. You must Maggie, have... I remember you trying to wrap me up. <laughs> Maggie, are you Maggie, listening? <laughs> hope you're listening. She keeps trying to follow me on Instagram and I don't follow her back. Oh, no. Well, you know what? I hold grudges for 15 years. Right, right. right. I mean, rightfully so. <laughs> Man, we had something similar because I was on the newspaper mm-hmm. and we had to um, go sell ads in quotes every once in a while. I like, go to local businesses and convince them to pay $10 for an ad. But we would just use that as an excuse to go to fucking Smoothie King or... Exactly. Oh, Smoothie King is such a Texas thing. Yeah, yeah. You know they still put those smoothies in styrofoam cups? They do, uh-huh. It blows my mind. Oh, Texas... Texas is, like, made of styrofoam. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's true. We went to, like, Whataburger and Smoothie King last time I was <laughs> in uh, Texas and it was, like, so much styrofoam. Uh-huh. It's Especially when you're going to keep your drinks cool. <laughs> right? It's the only way to keep keep that giant, like, 27-ounce uh-huh. smoothie cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like 50 grams of sugar. All kinds of boosts. <laughs> yeah. Like, you thought Jamba Juice is bad about the boost? Go to Smoothie King. Uh-huh. Okay, let me find where we are. Oh, yeah. 
So on this hike, this hay fever hike, Jane and Davy kind of have a bit of a heart to heart. And I think we should read this. Oh, yeah. I was um, thinking that too. Page 184. Oh, got it marked. Did you have a chance to look over that stuff I gave you? What stuff? Those pamphlets on drinking? Why would I waste my time reading them? Because you have a drinking problem. I told you before. I can stop any time I want to. I don't have to drink. I just do it because I like it. Why don't you stop lying? Isn't it time you face the facts? Isn't it about time you're honest with yourself? (laughs) You're a good one to talk about being honest. What do you mean? You told me your father died of a heart attack. You call that honest? Jane, wait. How did you find out? Your aunt told my mother. I've known for months. Why didn't you say something? I figured you had your reasons. I couldn't deal with the truth. There are things I can't deal with either. Did you ever think of that? No. Your life seems so easy. Well, it's not. Man. And that's how that chapter ends. Yeah, and it just made me think, you know, we've been very judgy of Jane. We don't know a whole lot about her home life. I want to know more. Her dad does suck, and her mom kind of sucks too, and they're rich, but they're not happy. Mm Mm-hmm. And then chapter 35. Davy is getting to be very mature, I I was just going to say that Davy has grown leaps and bounds since we started this novel. For example, she makes an appointment all by herself to see Miriam the next day. She knows that, like, she's been hiding something. The best thing for her to do is to talk to her therapist. Mm -hmm. Girlfriend's, like, way ahead of me. I know. I was going to say, like, most grown-ups don't have that, like, wherewithal to be like, oh, I can just call my therapist and uh, get some help with this. Obviously, I do need help. (laughs) I'm hiding something from people and lying. Right. She's got to work on herself. Yes, exactly. So uh, I thought this was funny. So she goes to the... um, her appointment with her therapist and she sits in the same chair she did last time even though there are other places to sit and it made me think about god I do that too I do that too I always sit in the same spot but you do that anywhere you go you know on a regular basis you tend to gravitate yeah and and close access to tissues oh yeah that's very (laughs) important and close access to exits you know if I go on a southwest flight and you pick your seat It's got to be within seven rows of the exit. Oh, Movie theaters. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Anytime we pick tickets online, it's aisle. Yep. And, like, it's close to the door. And definitely flights. I, like, if I can't get in the first few rows, I'm, like, out of there. Yeah. Well, they say it's seven. Seven is what they say. Statistically, yeah. Seven rows. Yeah. I'm, like, if I can get, like, three. I mean, I'd rather be in the exit row. That's my preference at all times. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I don't think you can do it when you're pregnant. Oh, But the coolest thing, when you are pregnant and you're flying Southwest, you can get priority boarding and you board before people that have family boarding. Yeah. It was, did did it a few times. It was the absolute best thing ever because you're the first people on the plane before even the A1. You can sit in the front row. Yeah, but then you can't have anything in front of you. Right. But all that leg room. It's true. It's a lot of leg room. (laughs) But that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So Davy's at Miriam's office, and she tells her, I lied about my father. I told Jane he died of a heart attack. And then she explains that it seemed easier to make up a story than it was to tell the truth. And then she tells Miriam that she did tell the truth to a friend, who we know is Wolf. Yeah. In a letter. And it did make her feel better. But she didn't tell him all of it. And I had to take pause there. I'm like, what? I thought we knew everything at this point. What hasn't Davy told us? And this is so bad, y'all. It was so heartbreaking. It was worse than I thought. Right. Do you want to read it? Yeah. So this is what uh, Davy's describing to Miriam. We ran to the store. I remember the sound of my screams when I saw my father on the floor. He was still alive. He said, help me. Help me, Davy. And I said, I will. I will, Daddy. I held him in my arms while Hugh phoned for help. Can you go on, Davy? 
We'll stop if it becomes too difficult. That was such a good therapist voice. <laughs> Davy says, I don't know how long it took before the police and the ambulance got there. I heard sirens from a long way off. And then the flashing lights made a pattern on the walls and the ceiling of the store. By then, my father was unconscious. I didn't want to let go of him. The police had to pry me loose. They let me ride to the hospital in the ambulance with him. But when we got there, Daddy was already dead. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. She has, like, witnessed the most traumatic thing Mm -hmm. ever. Her father basically died in her arms. Mm -hmm. Calling for help. Mm -hmm. I think we've mentioned this before, but PTSD, dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. (sighs) So... Miriam points out that sometimes you have to bring back painful memories in order to be done with them. And then Miriam reminds her that there's nothing she could have done and it's not her fault. And as Davy leaves, she says, I didn't tell you all of it. I didn't tell you about the blood. And then she turns and runs out of Miriam's office. She goes straight home, goes up to her room, opens the closet, reaches to the top shelf, And do you remember what's on the top shelf? It's the paper bag. The paper bag, which I had totally forgotten about. I know. It had been a while since the paper bag mentioned. This paper bag that Davy's been bringing around and not opening and and just thinking about a lot. We thought maybe there were crystals in there. Unfortunately not. No. Not 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 crystals. crystals. She grabs the bag and her bread knife and heads to the canyon to the cave where she and Wolf the cave they were going to live in. <laughs> and then we learn what's in the bag. So it's her jeans and her halter top. The clothes she was wearing that night when she held her father in her arms and they're caked in blood. Blood that's been dried up for six months. I can't believe she's been carrying this around and that she flew with it because that'd be a weird thing to find. Right? Yeah. TSA. Well, again, pre-9-11, you could get away with a lot. True. And she had a bread knife, don't you forget. Oh, that's right. And her checked luggage. (laughs) And then she recalls the blood from that night. Blood spattered on the walls, the loaves of bread on the shelves, on her dad's art. Remember, he was an artist and he would paint portraits of his family and the customers. And I just wrote, fuck, (laughs) fuck. (laughs) Yeah. So what Davy does, she's in the cave. She takes her clothes and the knife And then she buries them. Actually, she doesn't bury them. She just sets them in the cave and covers them with a pyramid of rocks. She does an interesting, yeah, uh, rock shrine. A rock shrine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just worry that someone's going to find these. Someone's going to call the cops. Like, there's a murdered teenage girl. Right. There's going to be some crazy, like, feature on Unsolved Mysteries. It's going to become national news. There's a pyramid of rocks and a halter top covered in blood and a bread knife yeah yeah it seems like davy that's an interesting choice right interesting choice you know she did what was right for her (laughs) goodbye daddy i love you i'll always love you this doesn't mean that i'm not going to think about you anymore this doesn't mean that i'm never going to think about that night either because that night happened and there's nothing i can do to change the facts but from now on i'm going to remember the good times from now on i'm going to remember you full of life and full of love. Which is exactly how Wolf asked her to yes. remember Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Full of life and full of love. Exactly. And speaking of Wolf, the lizards are back. Yeah, just as she looks up, she sees a lizard run behind a rock. Chapter 36. All my dreams have come true. (laughs) Davy receives a package from Big Sur, California. What the heck? What is this? Oh, it's a tiger's eye crystal. Boom. A little like flat version of one, like all kind of sanded down and beautiful. And from Wolf. So... Just like I'd always hoped and dreamed, the crystals are back. The book does have to do with Tiger's Eye crystals in some way. You are right. 
well, maybe you actually just like manifested that crystal. I think that's what I think. So I brought Jody a crystal today, actually a tiger's eye crystal in the shape of an eye. Allison, tell the story about how you found this crystal. Well, so I, um, I was just walking down the street and I thought, I really need to get something for Jody. I think I need to get her some kind of a treat. Something. You Thank know, you. she's been so wonderful. And I walked past all these other stores. I didn't even go in. And then I went right in the apothecary shop. Right in. I thought, oh, I'll get her some like lip gloss or something like that. But then as soon as I walked in the door, I was summoned to this tiger's eye crystal in the shape of an eye. It called to me. It's the first thing you looked at. It's the first thing I looked at, the first door I went into, and there it was. You were drawn to it. I was drawn to it, and um, it could have been more perfect. And so I feel like this crystal has actually been calling to me throughout this whole uh, reading of mm-hmm. tiger eyes. It's been waiting there for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm so pumped. <laughs> I'm so pumped too. So along with our mo- mantra for the Bloom Saloon, we now have a talisman, mm-hmm. which is this crystal tiger eye in the shape of an eye. It's going to keep us safe. You know, it's, it's, it helps you when you're feeling down mm-hmm. a little bit. Like you've lost a little self-esteem. It helps boost you right back up. Mm-hmm. That's what I was reading. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> and there's a note from Wolf. With this tiger's eye crystal. It says a tiger's eye for my tiger eyes. And she wonders when he's coming back. And she holds the crystal to her lips. Mm. Mm. And then mom has made dinner reservations just for her and Davy at Philomena's. Did you look it up? Yes! Because ah! <laughs> Philomena Romero actually is a famous Los Alamos chef. Yeah, and she wrote a cookbook or she, two. She did, and they're hard to find because I was trying to get my hands on a copy <laughs> of like Santa Fe's best recipes, of New Mexico's best recipes. She's really well known for like New Mexico style food. Yeah, which I don't know if I've ever had the pleasure of eating no I got really excited and was like okay so there's some some like Mexican style stuff happening but like Mm -hmm. what's the what's the fusion I think chilies are a big thing so I read Mm. a little bit I love that we both looked it up (laughs) I mean well it was so specific I was (laughs) like there's I wonder really want to know about this Philomena totally apparently you can either order with red chilies or green chilies Oh. But you're supposed to ask the waiter which is best. Oh, the, interesting. But sometimes you can get both and you say you want Christmas. <gasps> Red and green. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was fun. I like that. Um, they go to dinner and Davy carries the crystal in her pocket. They drink sangria. And and of course Davy's like, if Jane were here, she'd be drunk, but she, she'd I'm be just guzzling. gonna drink a little bit of the sangria. I like the fruit. Wine that tastes like fruit punch. Mm-hmm. And Gwen explains, you know, mom explains that she's actually been scared to be alone with Davy. Mm. To face the pain and and the reality of of what's happened and what Davy's been through and, and losing her husband. And Davy's like, well, you know, I, I needed you. Right. I needed you to be alone with me. And then mom drops a bomb. Oh, my God. Ned has proposed. But great news. She likes him, but she doesn't love him, and it's just too much too soon. Davy's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's super into it. <laughs> um, and so she's like, okay, when are we going home? <laughs> kind of afraid of what the answer might actually be. Mm-hmm. But it's great news after school ends. They'll sell the house and the store when they get back there, and maybe they'll get an apartment near the beach. Davy is just like, eggs. Static, because that's in a few weeks. They're going, going back, back to Jersey, Jersey. <laughs> exactly. I just, I've had that in my head this for the past couple hours. <laughs> um, but they do know Bitsy will be really sad. Oh, yep. But now she has to face her responsibilities. And, you know, she notes that Miriam's really helped her um, get there to mm-hmm. make these realizations and to gain this confidence back and, and understand what she needs to do to have a good life. Like, go, Miriam. 
You're a great therapist. Mm-hmm. And and she also notes, you know, Davy's like, Dad would have never been scared. He would have wanted us to go back. And Gwen's like, you know, he was scared. He was scared to follow his dreams. Right. Of, you know, opening an art gallery yeah. and doing all of that. And she's like, you know, he would want me to move on. Mm-hmm. To, um, to keep going with my life and keep making something of it. That was a great chapter. Yeah. Very positive. And then we've got chapter 37. Gwen and Davy take Jason for a walk. They want to tell him the news that they're going back to Jersey, Jersey. Thank you. Um, he's got all kinds of questions. Will Witsy come? Will Minka come? Will Ned come? What if someone tries to kill us? And so I just want to read this section really quickly. Jody is going to be Jason. What if somebody tries to kill us? Nobody is going to kill us. What if they do? They won't. Atlantic City isn't safe. This is the only safe place. It's not true. Well, what about my cookies? You can bake cookies in Atlantic City. But who will help me? I will. You? You don't know how to bake anything. I can. Learn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can learn. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes, really. And then all of a sudden, he's pumped. Right. It took him a Just second. Flip a switch. He was like, okay, wait. Uh, my life is cushy here. Walter and Bitsy say that everything is safe, but only here. And Bitsy helps me bake cookies. But as soon as he learns it. But then he's like, but someone else can help me bake cookies, and it's not the only safe place. Okay, bye. I mean, O to be seven again, oh and God. to be able to just uh, be so easily swayed. Super adaptical. Adoptical? <laughs> I'm trying to say adaptable, <laughs> but adaptical <laughs> came out instead. And the face you made after you said that? I was horrified <laughs> at that snafu. <laughs> I thought it was a word that I had just never heard of. And, uh... He's got to be adaptable. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bitsy makes dinner. Everyone kind of, they kind of know, like, Something's up. Mm-hmm. Gwen's, you know, gonna, she's going to break the news to Walter and Bitsy afterwards. Um, but it's not what they think it is. Oh, yeah. They think they know what's going on. They can tell something's up. They think, you know, oh, my God, Ned's proposed and they're going to get married and, like, move next door. I can just picture, like, those knowing glances they exchange and then, like, Walter puts his hand on... On Gwen's hand, he's like, Gwen, Ned Krasinski is one of the finest men we've ever known. Just wanting you to know that. And she's like, hold up. Yeah, she's like, this has nothing to do with Ned. And they're then they're like, oh, well, shit. Yeah. And they look at each other, wondering if the other knows what's going on. Neither one knows what's going on. And they just can't believe that Gwen and the family would want to leave so soon, in just a few weeks... And they'd want to go back to Atlantic City knowing it's not safe there like mm-hmm. it is in the hill. Mm-hmm. You know, they say you can't take the kids back there. Bitsy gets all teary-eyed. She storms off. You're being selfish and unfair. Can you believe that shit she's trying to pull? You know, and Walter says, you know, she just doesn't want to lose you. And Gwen says, I know. But Gwen has taken control of her life and she knows she cannot live it for Witsy. She has to do what's right for their family and she has to go back home. And she can't let safety and security rule her life. Nope. Yeah. That's how I feel living in Oakland. I know. You just got to throw all that out the window and uh, just appreciate. uh... It's a beautiful place to live. (laughs) There's great people here, but sometimes you... It's not very safe. Yeah, no, but... You know where it is safe? It's really boring. And then we've got chapter 38. Davy rides to the canyon and she leaves the letters to Wolf in the cave next to her pyramid of bloody clothes. (laughs) Just to add to the mystery for uh, those left to solve it. And she puts a note on it. It says, for Wolf only. For British eyes only. I just had that in my head too. Really? Uh Uh-huh. Mr. F. Yes. These are for wolf, for, for wolf, wolf eyes only. only. Ooh, wolf eyes. That's good. Uh-huh. 
she hopes she'll he'll find him she's just kind of like okay don't know where he is and that was chapter 38 man we are so close to finishing (sighs) really tying up some some loose ends here chapter 39 The whole family goes to the lemon lot to buy Gwen a car. It does not sound like a good place to buy a car. No. And it all came back to you. Do you remember when we said what we remembered about the book? And I was like, this is the book that taught me what a lemon was. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot. It's because of the lemon lot. Oh, that's really funny. I totally forgot about that. I hadn't even thought about it at all. (laughs) And this didn't drag my memory either. It's okay. I wouldn't expect it to do. So they end up getting a blue Subaru. A Subaru. A Subaru. And Davy wonders if it's the same one Jane puked on, which is awesome. I hope they did. They yeah. they came out to their car and were like, someone's been boozing in my car, baking out, and then they puked on top of it. I've got to get rid of this car. Right. Boozing. Bo- nuzzling and guzzling <laughs> in this car. <laughs> and then after they, you know, decide on the car to buy, Walter and Gwen take a little walk and they don't think anyone's listening. But Davy's listening because she of course. is the ultimate eavesdropper. And so Walter says to Gwen, it's not us, is it? And she says, or no, he says, I've been thinking about it and maybe I came on too strong. And then Gwen says, no, it's okay. You were strong when I needed you to be strong. She's very forgiving. Gwen's a good person. Yeah. And I had to interject a little side note i forgive walter too i know you don't approve of that i know you still hate walter i can't ever forgive walter because he said some really terrible things and he slapped yeah davy i think but it is the 80s right (laughs) and like so not saying that he was like my dad, but a lot of his traits remind me of how my dad approached things. Like, some people just are not good at dealing with teenagers. They're a product of their own upbringing as well. Walter probably never was taught how to communicate or how to compromise. And I feel like the way Davy and Walter butt heads were kind of the way I butted heads with my dad growing up. And, like, I think Walter has a good heart. He just, he's kind of of a bygone era. And I forgive him for that. And I think he, maybe Davey taught him that he needs to try a little harder to be understanding. Yeah, I hope he's learned a lot. Yeah, I hope so. And it sounds like it because just the way he's talking to Gwen and, you know, he understands they need to go back. He's not trying to fight it. True. And uh, you're you're very reluctantly. (laughs) You know, you don't have to agree with me, but that's just my, my thought. I just, I might need more time. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, those 15-year grudges can definitely... Right? <laughs> um, I remember when people ratted me out for skipping school. So <laughs> if Walter is slapping people, it's never, never. And then Jane comes over the day that the Wexlers are getting ready to leave. It's like moving day. And she's bawling. She says, I don't know what I'm going to do without you. You're my only friend. Oh, that's really sad, I thought. But the good news... I was sad for Jane. Yeah. But thankfully, she has finally admitted that she has a drinking problem. Yeah, I think that's why I felt bad for her. If she hadn't admitted that, I wouldn't feel bad for her. But she's really come around and and she knows that um, she needs to do something. Make a change. Yeah. I like, though, that she took a quiz in one of the pamphlets and that's how she determined she was an alcoholic. Oh, yeah, that's what set her over the edge. (laughs) But Davy, you know, she's... She doesn't think Jane's going to be okay without her because she's already set up two appointments for Jane at the alcohol abuse clinic and she has skipped out on both. Davy knows she has to leave and Jane just really needs to figure this shit out on her own. Yeah. But she doesn't know if she's going to be able to do it. I think she will. I think that Davy leaving will, will be the kick in the ass she needs. Mm-hmm. And then finally it's time to go and Bitsy comes into Davy's room for one last conversation. Do you want to read that one with me? Sure. Page 205. I don't know what Gwen's trying to prove. I don't know why she thinks she has to do this. La vida es una buena aventura. Aventura. (laughs) What does that mean? 
it means that life is a good adventure. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. I'm going to miss you, Davy. I'm going to miss all of you. Davy pats, pats Bitsy on the back. And I'll be so worried about you. You don't have to worry, Aunt Bitsy. We're going to be all right. I'd like to make a note. I do know enough Spanish to know that this phrase was incorrect. <gasps> really? It should be, la vida es una aventura buena. Ooh. So oh, yeah. Davy's feeling all cool. She's not even speaking proper Spanish. I've picked up several Spanish phrases, and this is one of them. <laughs> I mean, good for her for trying. Yes. Life is a great adventure. It's true. But I'm glad you pointed that out because I don't want to spread any more misinformation than we already do here on the Bloom Saloon. No, I want to be totally accurate with <laughs> everything that we do on this podcast. 100% accuracy. That's what we strive for. Mm -hmm. And then uh, chapter 40. Super short. I think you should just read it. Just read it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Jason races down the beach, his Dracula cape flying behind him. Mom and I are quiet, listening to the sound of the surf crashing against the jetty. There are so many memories here in Atlantic City, but you can't go back. Not ever. You have to pick up the pieces and keep moving ahead. I think about Linnea and Hugh. Will they know how much I've changed this year? Will they have changed too? I'll wait till tomorrow to find out. And then, it's possible I won't find out after all. Because some changes happen deep down inside of you. And the truth is, you only know about them. Wait. And the truth is, only you know about them. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Aww. The end. And it really encapsulates everything. You have to keep moving. You have to go on with your life. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that you may be different when you move on with your life. And maybe you're the only one that knows it. Tiger eyes. What a novel. I can see why this is a lot of people's favorite Judy Bloom novel. It's just so good. Mm -hmm. I, I've gone through so many emotions. I've, I've learned so much about Davy. In learning about Davy, I've learned about myself. Mm -hmm. I think we've had a lot of reminiscing about our own adolescence, our, our dealing with loss, mm -hmm. you know, how we, um, how we pick up the pieces and keep moving. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. It really was. Thank you, Judy. Oh, and speaking of, do you want to read that uh, last uh, about the author? Yeah. So, you know, right after you finish, there's an about the author. And I thought it was great to kind of understand, you know, when this was published, what Judy's bio was at the time. Where was she in her life? Mm -hmm. Judy Bloom, in a few years' time, has become one of America's most read, most loved writers for young people. Her books range in appeal from The One in the Middle is the Green Kangaroo, a beginning reader, through three stories about the Hatcher family, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, otherwise known as Sheila the Great, and Super Fudge, to novels such as starring Sally J. Freeman as herself and Blubber. And for older readers, <laughs> are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Then again, maybe I won't. Woo! It's not the end of the world. Deanie and forever. All of her books are notable for their delicacy, their humor, and their honesty and illuminating feelings her readers recognize as their own. Ms. Bloom has two college-age children and divides her time between Santa Fe, New Mexico, and New York City. Wow. They summed up Judy perfectly. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> we do all relate to her with humor and honesty. Yeah. I'm illuminated. But also, we know that Joe, uh, Judy, we know that Judy spends all of her, most all of her time in Key West these days. Yeah. So this is a really different time of her life mm -hmm. when she was still spending time in Santa Fe and actually spending time in Los Alamos. But that fizzled. There's a great uh, picture on the back cover too. Oh, I don't have it because mine got ruined. <laughs> it's of a young Judy in the desert. In New Mexico. Probably watching the lizards run. It looks like she has a great outfit on. Oh, definitely. She's got a paisley, kind of flowy skirt. Kind of a bohemian top and some some shells on her necklace. 
A puka shell necklace? It's not puka shells, but I think it's some like interesting shell beads. Mm. Okay, Allison. So we're wrapping up this episode and we do have a quiz. I'm excited and scared. Yeah, it's going to be good. There's no hazelnuts. (laughs) There's no hazelnuts this time. I'm so sorry. I didn't have enough time to get the hazelnuts together. The good news is I can reward myself with cheese. Oh, we have so much cheese in the kitchen. It's a really tasty goat cheese. You know what I was thinking, though? Because we eat a lot of cheese here in the Bloom Cocoon. Mm -hmm. Cheese is one of the few foods that you should not eat before, like singing or broadcasting your voice. Yeah, dairy is yeah. Uh, is not good for your voice. It might lead to a little gas. Speaking of, can we just clear something up? Allison's husband swore he heard one of us fart in was it last week's episode Mm -hmm. he even gave us the time marker he thought it happened and i'm very sorry guys it was not a fart it was a motorcycle just want to clear that up if it was a fart we would tell you (laughs) we totally would i mean we burp a lot and i've been editing them out so you haven't heard them if it was a fart i probably would have left that in because that would be amazing farts are hilarious (laughs) Yeah, so we just want to clear the air on that. Yeah. Motorcycle. Clear the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Clear in the air. Definitely going to have some cheese after this. So, really quick, before we get to the quiz, I thought we might want to discuss where are Davy and Jane now? Ooh. They'd be 51. Okay. Yeah, you got an idea? I have some ideas. Uh huh. I think that Davy had. An amazing career on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And now she is a judge on a Broadway star, like who's going to be the next Broadway star reality show. Oh. She's more mature now. She's very seasoned. Yeah. Davy Wexler. I like that idea. She's a reality show judge. Jane is dead. What? Oh, harsh. Way harsh, Ty. The 80s were hard on her. You know, I kind of had a similar thought. She graduated high school, top honors, because she was still a very functioning alcoholic. But when she got to college, things just fell apart. Mm. And then I thought, well, maybe she dropped out. And then I thought, you know, she probably followed her boyfriend somewhere. Maybe they went to L.A. Maybe she became a Sunset Strip kind of groupy girl party girl or she went to studio city oh right right in her sister's footsteps yeah she liked studio city (laughs) my fantasy was that she was at the viper room when river phoenix (laughs) od'd that's so specific i mean i can picture it i really can Mm, Mm -hmm. man another sad one that one really gets me i read about it like every year just to remind yourself of, mm-hmm. yeah. What could have been, River? Mm-hmm. And then now, are you ready for our quiz? I'm I'm so ready. Okay. This quiz. Oh, yeah. I got to pull it up. Okay, Allison. I made a quick little quiz in the vein of Jeopardy. <gasps> so it's a very simplified Jeopardy. I got categories for you. I got different point um, tiers for you. And I'm going to pipe in some Jeopardy music, okay? Oh, my God. I'm going to rub the tiger eyes for good luck. Yeah. So I've got the categories. And then, you know, we all know Jeopardy. I'm going to ask my question in the form of an answer. And you have to answer in the form of a question, okay? I think I can do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whatever. I'll do my best. Yeah. Okay. So the categories are Fabulous Fashion, Los Alamos Landmarks, Witsy's World, or Science Stuff. (laughs) <laughs> These are so good. And uh, the, the you can pick your price point. $200, $600, or $1,000 for each category. Okay. I'm going to go Fabulous Fashion for 600 Okay. Davy's favorite item of clothing, which she wears twice. The tiered skirt. Um, the tier. Oh, what is the tiered skirt? There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I already messed it up. You got 600 points. Woo! 
All right, Allison, would you like to stay in fabulous fashion or would you like to choose Los Alamos Landmarks, Witsy's World, or Science Stuff? I would like to go Witsy's World for 1,000. Very ambitious. As part of her instant motherhood, TM, Bitsy buys this book and becomes a big fan of Bran. What is... Kids need to eat right? Oh, so close. You're so close. What is... Healthy kids? Oh. Eh. It is, what is how to feed your kids right? Oh, I knew there was a right in there. It was... You're very close. Okay. Can, do, can you give, like, half points in Jeopardy? Yeah. Sure. I'm going to give you 500. I'll take it. Would you like to stay within Witsy's world? Or would you like science stuff, Los Alamos landmarks, or fabulous fashion? I like fabulous fashion for 1,000. Okay. The unique accoutrement on Danielle's shoulder. Oh. It's a troll. What is a troll? Very close. What is a hobbit? And what other adjectives went along with that? Fuzzy little hobbit. Yes! There you go. <laughs> You're doing really good at fabulous fashion. Would you like to stay in fabulous fashion um, for 200? Yeah, I'd like to close out fabulous fashion. Their dramatic accessory often worn by Jason. Oh, what is a cape? A Dracula cape. Yes. Good job. Woo! All right, Allison, you've closed out fabulous fashion. Now we have Los Alamos landmarks, Witsy's world, or science stuff. You have not touched Los Alamos landmarks yet. I, or I, Witsy's world. I was heading to uh, Los Alamos landmarks. What is Los Alamos landmarks for 200, please? Oppenheimer and Jane both lived on this famous street. Ba what is Bath the Bro? Yes! Would you like to keep going for 600? Yes, please. Bitsy loves to put on her bolo tie and volunteers as a tour guide here. Where is the Bradbury Museum? Yes. 600 points for you. Boom. Okay. Would you like to close out Los Alamos Landmarks for 1,000? Let's close that baby out. <laughs> the store where Davey buys two postcards for Linnea and Hugh. What is Doodlets? No! <laughs> no! I knew it. I just wanted it to be Doodlets, but it's TG&Y. What is yes. TG&Y? Yes. Turtles, girdles, and yo-yos. That's right. Doodlets. I, I just know. wanted to say doodlets again. It's not in Los Alamos. Anyways, it's I know. Santa Fe. You I know, just I, love I tried doodlets. to work it in there, but it just yeah, it didn't fit. Well, soon there's going to be a doodlets in Oakland. So. <laughs> <laughs> right next to the apothecary. Yes. <laughs> doodlets coming to Temescal Alley. Um, would you like to... What about science stuff? I haven't touched science stuff because mm -hmm. I'm scared, but let's go there. Let's go there for 200, please. Okay. Linnea's gift to Davy when they first met in science class. What is an anatomical drawing of, of uh, reproductive system? Of a lady. <laughs> Not a lady. A man? Not a man. <laughs> what did we? It's an animal. Oh, a frog? Yes. <laughs> of a lady frog. <laughs> of a lady frog. For 200. What is a lady frog? What is Kermit's girlfriend? Is <laughs> <Yeah>. a pig. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, my God. It was a pig. It is a pig. Miss Piggy is, like, my number one favorite thing in the world. So. Hiya! Kermit! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um... All right. Well, would you like to go back to Witsy's world or stick with science stuff? I'm, I'm feeling good about the science stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, let's go with science stuff for 600, please. The two bombs developed at Los Alamos also featured at the Bradbury Science Museum. What is Little Boy mm -hmm. and Big Man? Mm. Very close. I know we had a discussion about this earlier. Um, uh, what's another word for big? Fat? Yeah. Fat boy? No. <laughs> fat man? Yes. <laughs> Tall pig? Tall, Tall frog? <laughs> Tall lady pig bomb? <laughs> Tall lady pig bomb? Mm -hmm. That is my experimental band that I play with. Tall lady pig bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. Would you like to stick with science stuff for a thousand? You've got I this. I would. I'm, I'm trying to get some cheese. Some okay. cheese? Yeah. What What do you mean? My treat. 
Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to the cheese. Give okay. me 1,000. Okay, 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 okay. The division, Ned the Nerd, works in at the lab. What is the H division? Oh my god, that was too easy. Yes, you got it. No so more. I only have one more, right? In Two Witsy's more. World? Witsy's World? Witsy's World, okay. Would you like to go for the 200 or 600? Ooh, let's go 200. This sweet spirit is a favorite of Walter's. Oh, what is Brandy? Yes. Woo! Is there... I haven't seen Jeopardy in a while. Is there a noise they make when you get something right? Is it like a ding ding or a... I think there's something. Like a boo 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 That kind of thing? Uh, <laughs> is there a... <laughs> you know a... <laughs> Just give me the last one. Just, okay, okay, fuck this. Um, the phrase emblazoned on Bitsy's bumper sticker for 600. Aww. You know this. Think about what kind of car she has. <gasps> I love my Volvo. Yes! What is it? I love my Volvo. It's her baby. It's her baby. Oh, that was fun. It was yeah. exciting. How yeah. much did I win? Everything. All of it? You won all the cheese. Yes. <laughs> Where do cheese, we go? F- it's cheese time, and uh, we're going to watch Tiger Eyes. Yes, we're going to watch Tiger Eyes next week, and we'll do a mini episode for you. It's available on iTunes if anyone wants to watch it with us for three ninety nine, or you can buy it for six ninety nine. dollars Okay. So, uh, that's cool, and we're going to talk about it. Have a little mini ep. Yeah, and then that'll give you enough time to go ahead and buy your copy of Then Again Maybe I Won't and read along with us. Or not. You don't have to. But there's wet dreams, so that's what we're So you might want to read that for yourself. You might want to read that one to me again. (laughs) Thank you for listening. Bye. Thank you. Wait, wait. I got to say this. Thank you, Tyler Barber, for our theme song. I remembered. Woo! Okay, bye. Bye.